Well, good morning. How are you this beautiful Monday morning, the 11th of May, 2020? Oh, I'm just wrapped to be alive and I can't wait to see some of my friends and some of my family starting to jump online. It's great to be with you this morning. Thanks for hopping on. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Isaac Smith is here. Another big day in the classroom for you. And Jackie, how are you? Hey, to all my friends and family, if you're watching this later on, either in the day, uh, maybe you're watching this on YouTube, maybe you're picking this up on Spotify, uh, this is originally recorded in Facebook Live, and so I'm saying to a whole bunch of my friends, good morning, I see trousers, I see my wife online, I see the wonderful Teresa here with us, and it's so great to, to have you here. I love the live format, I feel like we do actually get a chance to be together uh, with each other. Why don't you just take some time, say good morning to each other, love heart your comments, all that sort of stuff. Good morning, Liz. Uh, and uh, you, you can even begin to, to sort of say things like, I think today is going to be a great day. I think today is going to be a day of promise. Today, we're looking, going to unpack purpose today. So I'm really excited about that. We are changing things up a little bit this week. Uh, so this is my one and only uh, morning encouragement for the week. Um, it'll be a little bit longer, just looking to give us some few extra things to chew on, to chew through, uh, and we're taking this to a couple of different formats. Uh, so if you are also just listening to this, you can fast forward. Actually, no, we're about to start, so don't fast forward anything. Um, but we've still got communion on Tuesday and on Thursday night. Cannot wait to be doing Q&A with my beautiful bride, uh, my partner, um, Pastor Karen, who was just incredible yesterday with uh, Mother's Day and to all of our teams who made that happen, men and women, we say for a long time we don't just want our faith uh, or our community or our sense of purpose to be exhibited on a Sunday. We want to take it into Mondays and Tuesdays and to have so many people dropping out gifts and, and communicating with each other, loving upon one another. I just think that's what the community, that's what the church uh, that's what this this company of faith is intended to be about. So how good is that? Got a got a real picture for us this morning uh, in terms of uh, just in terms of how we walk through this week. You know, it's I, I know how many of you have have woken up to to sort of clouded mornings. Now it's a beautiful morning outside, but you know what? We wake up to a, a clouded morning in our heart. The the path seems unclear, or we sort of hit out hit the pillow at night time, and there's still the walls there, and we go, I just didn't break through today. I just felt confined today. I felt restricted today. You know, I want to let you know that Father is continuing to call you on. That he is continuing to say, I'm singing over you with my love and, and I'm so proud of every time you realign your thinking and every time you stand up again, even if you've been knocked down. I had this picture of a parent encouraging its child to walk and many of us would have had that wonderful experience of, of either propping them up on their feet and watching their little legs shake and then flop back down upon their nappy bums again, you know, or, or they're sort of pulling themselves up on the furniture and they're standing there swaying and then that first step and that second step, we've probably all been there where we've, we've held them up and they've sunk back down again and just crawled off in the opposite direction. So I'm not interested at all. Uh, but you know, Father is, is that continuing, encouraging us, come on, come on, you can do this. And, and I guess he's willing to put us through some of the, the experiences of what does it look like to, to bear our own weight and the promises and the purpose that we have is worth the pain of bearing our own weight on those little stumpy baby legs at times. He is there holding us up. He is there making sure that we won't fall, even though we may choose to sit down at times. We're not going to fall. And that's great news, isn't it, Jess? I absolutely love that about the Father calling us forward, singing over us and, and opening up all his provision and all of his promise and all of his love for us to keep calling us up. You know, we... I just want to take a minute uh, or two this morning to, I guess, reaffirm again our sense of identity as this community of faith, as this, as this church family. We say this all the time, that, that, um, that we are here for a reason and that you are made on purpose for purpose. I wonder even if you wanted to put up this morning that in the, in the initial statement of that, that Father's heart is upon me. His heart is upon to, sorry, towards me. Why don't you put up there in the comment bars, my father's heart is 
towards me. That you are here for a reason. Uh, Not just here on planet earth, but also here in this time and space listening to my voice right now. Because God wants to speak to you. My Father's heart is towards me. I have a purpose and it's not some random thing, but it's handcrafted. Uh, It is unique and it is absolutely beautiful. We love, as a church, people and communities. And we so value the taking of the first steps of faith. And the next steps of faith, and we we say this quite often too, that where our mind goes, the behavior follows. So while you don't need to believe in order to belong, that there is a, a sense of acceptance and value and belonging here, which precedes belief, if we actually sharpen and grow our belief, then it's our behaviors which come in behind that. And so often we've tried to do it the other way around, haven't we? We've tried to go, oh, it's my behavior, my behavior, my behavior makes me acceptable to God. And therefore, I get to believe or he believes even things about me. No, no, no. It starts with belief. It starts with faith. It starts with that statement. And thank you for my friends who are putting this up online. My father's heart is towards me. Maybe even if you can't even write it down, why don't you speak it out into the atmosphere? Speak it out and and give decibel to it. My father's heart is towards me. Don't freak somebody out on the bus this morning or at the gym, but my father's heart is towards me. What we're, what we're, I guess we're interested in is this first step, this next step of faith, this taking our belief system and seeing it develop. Part of the way we actually get to do that is through honor and celebration. We love to celebrate every step that we take. I got a chance to see Jamie on the weekend. You just are, are looking good, brother. You know, I'm just so excited for the smile that was on your faith, face, the, the faith and the belief that God is good, life is good, and you're here for a reason. I saw that all over you on Saturday, man. It was just awesome. And so we celebrate these things as well as honoring the unique gifts and the unique skills that each of us carry. God actually says in Ephesians 4, he gave us gifts. Uh, He gave us apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and and, uh, evangelists in order that we actually may become one, in order that we also may grow up and mature, in order that the gifts that he's given you would spill out. And so you know, we'd love to honor how those gifts play off and play, and play with each other for, for many years. And I, I don't know, Gary, you've probably seen it. Bev, you've probably seen it. That, you know, things such as the, the pastor and the teacher and the evangelist were in competition with each other. The evangelist was going, you've got to go, you've got to go. And the pastor's saying, just be nice, just be nice. And the teacher going, you can't go because you don't know enough. And, and yet what we get the chance to do with these gifts, it could be leadership or mercy, it could be helps, it could be wisdom. It could be the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist. But we get to honor one another and we call up who we are becoming, not stumbling over who we're not. And so we love people and communities. We love the first steps. We love the sense of developing belief and honoring and celebrating each other. And and you know what? This actually is helping us fulfill the mission of the church. And that's that we connect. Now you can get caught up on the word connect, but connect as in uh, Karen preached on Uh, the word yesterday in John 15 just so beautifully and so powerfully but this connect means to abide in to take my life sustenance in to remain in to live in Jesus prayed only a couple of chapters later that I want to be one Father I want all my believers all my fathers all my sort of brothers and sisters to be one just as we are one and this sense of connection and our heart's desire is that we would know that connectedness that personal relationship with Jesus that transcends every pain and every bit of problem that we have, that relationship, that connection with Jesus then leads us into deeper and more meaningful connection with each other, not judging, not criticizing, not um, comparing ourselves, but seeing the best in each other and releasing that because we are connected to, to, the, to the vine. We can actually love one another. We can take that faith then and connect it to our daily lives, our workplaces, being a grandmother, being a husband, being a, a, a friend, being you know, a steward of, of, uh, of society. And then we can take that into the four corners of the earth and we get a chance to do that. Ultimately, as I'm just affirming again who we actually are, maybe you're jumping online, you really don't know who we are as a church at all or what our, some of our, our beliefs and, and values uh, and a sense of mission is. Ultimately, it's culminated in this, that we are a Jesus-centered community. We put Jesus at the middle 
of everything. And as we put him in the center of our thinking, of our goings, of our lying downs, of our raisings ups, of our worship, our giving, our serving one another, of, of the th- words that we speak, of the thoughts that we allow to, to germinate, or indeed even the things which, which come against us and we get to diminish, it's all because Jesus is at the middle. And so we, we get this whole experience. We are on a journey with each other. And thank you, Bev, for putting that up. My father's heart is towards me. And we do. We get to adjust, not judge. We get to share and we get to care. We get to celebrate and we get to sharpen one another. So what's what's our goal? What, why, are we, why are we gathering online? Why are you watching this further down the track? Well, it's because we actually want that adjusting and that sharpening to happen. We love to do it as we develop our language, as we develop our culture, as we develop a, a united understanding of, of not just what we do as a church, but what we do as a community of faith. I see my brother Wayne online, you know, and right across Tassie, right across Australia, right across the globe, uh, is that we that his heart is that we are actually his followers, his children who are learning from him and then not just going out for him, but going out with him. And taking his good news, taking his freedom, taking his peace out into the world. You know, we have this sense of uh, here at church, Abundant Life Church, we would probably have our discipleship track would be the discipleship according to Dr. Zeus. It's we knows, grows, goes and sows. So we want to know him and allow him to know us more. We want to actually take this out of the house and into the world that so desperately needs, um, you know, a, a sense of love and affirmation and value. We, we celebrate a Mother's Day, but I guarantee you there are countless mums who yesterday felt like failures, who yesterday felt forgotten, who yesterday felt fear that they weren't measuring up and that their mistakes were going to put a scratch onto their children's psyches or hearts that were never going to be undone. They need to know that Jesus, that we know, and so we know him and he knows us. We go out in him. We get to to uh, grow and sow him and see others doing the same thing. Uh, my brother Scotty Haas is, is so good at that as well. So I absolutely love that. So look, what have I got? I've got 10 minutes. And what I'd like to be able to, to give us this week is, is some things to chew on on how to live a life of purpose. I'll be putting this up on, on as our titles of three keys to living a life of purpose. You could probably underline that by saying how to persevere in pain. So if you would like, why don't you even write up now or make a statement, I am here for a reason. Why don't you make that statement? And others are saying that in the comments bar as well. Or if you're listening to this in, a, in one of our connect groups, why don't you actually make that physical statement now of agreement, I am here for a reason. You have been given a purpose And even though there may be problems, God has got provision and promise to see the purpose that he has got for you. The Bible actually says that his word that comes does not return to him without having accomplished what he had sent it to have accomplished. The Bible says he watches over his word to see that it is fulfilled. So the word he has spoken to you, Liz, the word he has spoken to you, Matt Garvin, who is an absolute champion in our city, that he is actually that you are an overcomer, you are a light bearer, you are a truth speaker, you are more than enough and that all things are possible for you, that he has said that to you and he's going to watch over it to see that it's performed. He doesn't leave us just to muddle and puddle around. Isn't that great? So three things to living a life of purpose. There are four universal questions that every single person on the planet asks. Where did I come from? Where am I going to? Origin, destination. We ask the question of how do I know the difference between good and bad, particularly when you know there is so many things saying, I'll do whatever you want, whatever you feel, however you want to do it, that's fine. I'm going to tell you, friends, that ain't working. We may want to be nice. We may want to just not mess up someone's trip or, or, or seem to be confrontational or judgmental. But there actually is good and there is bad. There is right and there is wrong. And we live in a world that says you can't differentiate that between that anymore. And I wonder, I wonder, beloved, if the rise of mental illness is because we no longer know what is right or what is wrong. The rise of, of addiction 
uh, from drugs to, 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 to body image to spending to food is actually because we actually don't know anymore right and wrong that the carpet has been pulled out from underneath our feet could it be that that violence and domestic violence means that because we don't know we are here created for nobility and strength to be an indiscriminate with our love and our grace and our forgiveness but because we no longer know that and we can no longer call good and bad we actually have the rise of violence and, and brokenness in our land so where did i come from where am I going to? How do I tell right and wrong? And then the fourth question that every person asks is, what is my purpose? What am I doing here? And I'd like to address that one this morning with us. And I've only got a couple of minutes left. The, the, the thing I'd like to, to talk about is really about my hero, Jesus. And, and I would like to draw three things, and I've got to do it quick, uh, about how we actually learn from Jesus who lived the ultimate life of purpose. So the first thing is he had his father's voice ringing in his he ears he had his father's voice affirming him the second thing is his strength was in his surrender and the third thing was he was all, he sorry it was never about him so the first thing is is that if we're going to live a life of purpose if we're going to persevere in pain we need to know what god has said about us in matthew three seventeen, but you'll find it in uh, luke and you'll find it in john uh, luke and in mark sorry that he says when jesus was baptized this is what god said he said, this is my son, I love and my greatest delight is in him. Jesus was able to move forward in his ministry because God had actually spoken to him, had affirmed him, had spoken his value and his acceptance upon him and had given him purpose. This, this rendering of, of so this, this reading from Matthew 3.17 is actually is a, is a um, leading on from what Isaiah had written hundreds and hundreds of years earlier. Isaiah had written this, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him and he will bring forth justice to the nations. You know, God is saying over to you, you are mine, I made you, I love you, you have got a purpose and it's not going to be through your own strength, striving, sweat and tears, it is going to be because my spirit is resting upon you. How do we live a life of purpose? We know that God has called me his. Why don't you write that up now? God has called me his. God has called me his. You could write up, God has called me friend if you want. You could write up, God has called me son. God calls me daughter. God calls me his delight. These are words, if we're going to persevere, we need to know what God has said over us. Jesus moved forward from his point of baptism into three years of the most ridiculously arduous ministry where every time he turned there was someone demanding of him or criticizing him seeking to kill him ultimately to the point he laid down his own life but he had his father's voice constantly ringing in his ears and settling down into his heart my god has called me his. My God calls me friend. My God calls me his delight. My God says I am his son, that I am accepted, that I am valued, and that I belong to him. Now you can hear his voice a number of different ways. You can read it in, in the Bible itself. He will continue to, to do that. Why don't you download our, our Bible app, oh, sorry, our church app. There's a Bible on that. You can find these verses. You can read it in that in that Bible app um, that's linked on our phone it will actually read it to you so you can even just have it in your headphones you can have the word reading over you as you go to sleep and you will find his promises and his affirmation for you every page you also find it in still small voices i haven't heard the sort of audible voice of god booming down from heaven but i've heard little whispers in my heart it doesn't need to be in times of absolute stillness you know what? God spoke to me in the midst of the most uh, traumatic uh, time of ministry that I've ever known. And he said this to me, be mine, not theirs. Be mine. And it was such a clear clarion call to my heart about who I am aligned with and what I am aligned for to be one with him, not to be pushed and turned and, 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 and spun around. You know, we can hear these whispers 
in in the still small voice and then write them down they will they will be so strong for you so jesus lived a life of purpose we can live a life of purpose because we know what father has said about us the second thing is he says that his strength was in his surrender we know zechariah 4 verse 6 says not by might and not by power but by my spirit ephesians tells us that we're saved by grace not by the works that we do uh, but there is a really interesting point in this that we are saved by grace through our faith our faith leads us into grace then the grace rests upon our works not the other way around we work we work we work hoping that he'll be pleased enough to breathe on it or to bless it and therefore that actually saves me um, but we go jesus understood that in surrender that in laying down his life and actually receiving the spirit at that point of baptism and the spirit came down like a dove and was upon him that he moved because he had he had rid himself of all of his power of being a deity he was god but he was in flesh he took off all that that he had been wearing in heaven and walked just like we walked and then actually received the holy spirit that would be his power and he said i can only do the things that i hear and see the father doing i can only say what is echoing in me through me and that we he said simply surrender to that beloved in your surrender today you don't have to work harder you don't have to do better you don't have to do it longer you get to surrender and go my god works in me and why don't you write that up my god works in me my god is working in me and i move from victory to victory not for victory i move from peace in peace to peace not doing these things to get peace my god loves me exactly as i am nothing i can do will make him love me more nothing i can do will make me love him less or him love me less i should say just rest in that and surrender and go my god has got good plans for my life and he is going to bring about the provision for them and thirdly as we get ready to close it was never about him jesus never made it about him we read in matthew where is it matthew 20 28 jesus himself saying i didn't come to be served i came to serve i came to lay down my life for many if i want to live a life of purpose if i want to live a life which perseveres in times of pain i have to realize that i'm not here for me I am here for others that what he has done in me is to save me my name is written in the land's book of life through that faith the old is gone the new has come I'm a new creation I no longer live but Christ lives in me and he will never leave me he will never forsake me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and that I can now be absolutely indiscriminate with my love my grace with my with my kind words uh, with my money with my time so able to be interrupted just as jesus was because it's not about me i'd love to i'd love to read something to you then we'll then we'll pray uh, i love anthony de Mello says this in, in his work the way of love he says take a look at a rose is it impo- is it possible for a rose to say i'll offer my fragrance to good people but not to bad or can you imagine a lamp which holds its rays from a wicked person who seeks to walk in its light it could only do that by ceasing to be a lamp observe how helplessly and indiscriminately a tree gives its shade how helplessly i want to be helpless in terms of giving to people and loving people how about you write that up oh lord help me be helpless today help me be helpless today oh that's uh, so good observe how helplessly and indiscriminately a tree gives its shade to everyone good and bad young and old high and low to animals and humans and every living creatures he said this even to those who seek to cut it down the first quality of compassion is indiscriminate character god is so indiscriminate with us and he's calling us to be the same indiscriminate with our forgiveness with kind words with acts of mercy serving one another we are roses that don't get to withhold our fragrance based on how we judge others we are not here for ourselves we are here 
for others. Help me be helpless today. I want to just cast a shade upon weary travelers, Lord, because you are the sun which is beating down upon me. I want to, to give up your light, Lord, because you have given me light and I want to live that life of purpose. Father, as we move into praying today, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have given us a life of purpose, that there is a plan for us and you are going to resource that plan. But Lord, you desire that we would thrive even in times of chaos, that we would persevere even in times of great pain and affliction. And I see my brothers and sisters doing that day in, day out, hour in, hour out. Father, I ask today that you would affirm to us again the way of purpose and the way that that purpose is both sustained and then becomes a refrain, becomes a beautiful song into our world is because we have your voice speaking over us, acceptance, value and belonging. We know that we don't need to be strong enough, good enough, powerful, good looking, that it is simply by your spirit living inside of us and as we surrender to you, your strength rises up. And Father, we know your purpose is not that we have our needs met. You speak to us in Matthew 6 that you fed the birds of the air, you clothed the flowers of the field, and we are so much more important to you than all of that. So Lord Jesus, thank you. Would you speak? Would you help us to surrender? Would you help us to be helpless in being so indiscriminate with your compassion and your love and your story today that all people would know? your freedom, your love, and your hope. Amen. Hey, beloved, we are help for today and we are hope for tomorrow. If you need a hand, you can find us. Please email us, info at Abundant. Our, our church app has got a prayer wall on there. We would love to pray with you. There's also a celebrations wall. We'd love to celebrate with you. you. Obviously, you know us on Facebook. Why don't you hit like and like Abundant Life Church. That'll come up in our, in our live notifications. If you're on uh, YouTube right now, hit subscribe. If you're on Spotify, hit subscribe and it will continue to tell you whenever we're coming up. I believe you're in for a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm so excited about leaving this place and moving on and in, but thank you for hanging out today. Uh, God bless you as you go and love somebody.